using just typical feedstuffs, it's really difficult to fully meet methionine requirements and get to the right levels. So yeah, using yeah. a rumen protected source is really going to help you to really meet those methionine requirements and take advantage of the functional roles of methionine to benefit the cow's metabolism and her milk production. Hi, I'm Bill Weiss, host of the Dairy Black Belt podcast. My guest today is Dr. Danielle Sherlock. Uh, she's the ruminant, I'm going to read this, ruminant RNI science manager for Odysseo. Uh, she received her BS and MS from my old employer, the Ohio State University, and her PhD from University of Illinois. And for her PhD work, she did a lot of work on metabolism of methyl donors, especially under heat stress and negative energy balance. Danielle, good to see you again, and welcome to the Black Belt. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Um, today, we're going to study a, a discuss a paper published in Journal of Animal Science, not Dairy Science, but Animal Science. And this concerns the use of, uh, or the interaction between heat stress, rumen protected methionine, and immune function or immune response. I guess I always like to start with, you know, why you did this experiment, or what was the hypothesis behind looking at immune measures and heat stress and methionine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so over the last uh, few years, a lot of work has been coming out about the negative effects of heat stress, particularly in terms of um, immune cell activation during heat stress. And we know from our transition cow studies over the last decade that uh, methionine supplementation helps to overcome uh, negative effects of the transition period on immune function and oxidative stress, for example. Um, so that led us to hypothesize, well, if we have similar immune activation and oxidative stress during heat stress, uh, methionine could also be beneficial there and help to improve um, immune function and metabolism during a heat stress event. Thanks. Um, this is kind of a complicated experiment. Can you briefly give a give an overview of the design and, and treatments? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, this project, we used 32 uh, multiparous Holstein cows um, in a split plot uh, crossover design. Um, so a little complicated, but I'll break it down quick. Um, we had two dietary treatments, a control diet and a diet with rumen protected methionine. Um, methionine was added using Smart Amine M at 0.1% dry matter, um, which these diets were amino acid balanced. So to give you an idea, this gave that methionine diet a lysine to methionine ratio of 2.74. Um, and then the control was 3.47. And then we fed those diets and collected some baseline thermal neutral measurements. And then for nine days, half of the cows on each diet were exposed to heat stress conditions using the electric heat blanket model uh, from Iowa State. And then during that time, the other half of the cows um, were actually pair fed um, to their heat stress counterparts to help us control for decreases in dry matter intake that we know are induced by heat stress. And then after that nine day period, um, we had a washout period and then we repeated the experiment. Um, and so in this second period, um, cows remained on the same dietary treatments, um, but the environmental conditions were inverted. Uh, so for example, if a cow was heat stressed in the first period, um, she was then exposed to thermal neutral conditions in the second period and vice versa. Okay, let's start with you, you measured plasma amino acids and some other energy metabolites or other metabolites. First of all, just the overall effect of heat stress on both plasma amino acids and these other metabolites. What, what, what did you find? Yeah, so heat stress really had some negative effects here. Um, in terms of amino acids, there was a decrease in uh, total amino acids, branch chain amino acids, and essential amino acids in the plasma. Um, and so this is something that's often seen with heat stress, and it likely represents an increased use of the amino acids for things such as um, gluconeogenesis for energy, as well as uh, acute phase 
proteins such as haptoglobin or heat shock proteins um, to help those cows deal with inflammation and uh, me metabolic changes during heat stress. And I just want to reemphasize these were para fed. So it isn't like this was because these cows ate less, right. ate less amino acids. So it's, it's much more likely it's utilization, not supply. Um, one thing, um, and you're going to have to define this for me, but you found an interaction between heat stress and methionine and this thing called R quickie. What, what first, what is the significance of r quickie if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and what, what did you find? Yeah, so the r quickie is an indirect method of calculating insulin sensitivity. Um, you use log concentrations of uh, glucose, insulin, and NEFA um, in this calculation. Um, and the interesting effect here was that pair-fed thermal neutral cows had a greater increase in the R quickie, um, which can indicate uh, increased insulin sensitivity um, compared to the cows that were under the heat stress conditions. Um, but it's one thing to note is that um, those pair-fed thermal neutral cows actually had greater decreases in dry matter intake and milk yield. Um, so this kind of is a little bit confounding. Um, so you need to take a little bit of care when understanding these and looking at these R quickie results. Again, for my benefit as well, what's what's the briefly, what's the significance of insulin resistance in, in a dairy cow or insulin sensitivity? in a dairy cow. Yeah, it's really good. To, insulin's really going to impact um, how those cows are uh, basically metabolizing, utilizing energy, um, you know, increased insulin sensitivity. Um, they could be better at taking up and utilizing um, the glucose here. So it's an important metabolically here for these cows. On insulin, or excuse me, on, on immune function, what, what did you find with respect to immune function or immune measures, I should say? Yeah, we measured um, some biomarkers um, related to immune function and inflammation. Um, and we see that heat stress really had a detrimental effect here. Um, there was increases in things such as um, inflammatory cytokines, um, acute phase proteins like haptoglobin and serum amyloid A. Um, there was also an increase in lipopolysaccharide binding protein. Um, so these all indicate that there was an increase in inflammation and immune activation in these cows under heat stress. I want one more reason to, to mitigate heat stress. Mm -hmm. Adiseo, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M, the best in-class rumen protected methionine product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, capture more value from their components, and maintain the lifetime performance of their herds. For more product information and to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids, go to MilkPay.com. The last question here, just to wrap up, um, or two two short questions. One is how do you decide on dose of RP methionine, and is it possible to formulate a diet without supplements to get that much extra methionine into these cows? Yeah, so we, we based it off of really trying to hit the needs um, and the requirements for methionine and really trying to hit that lysine to methionine ratio of about 2.7 is what we really um, look at here in that range to really meet our requirements. Um, and using just typical feedstuffs, it's really difficult to fully meet methionine requirements and get to the right level. So yeah, using yeah. a rumen protected source is really going to help you to really meet those methionine requirements and take advantage of the functional roles of methionine to benefit the cow's metabolism and her milk production. Yeah, I think just to finish up, I think it's really important that amino acids do a lot more than just synthesize protein or, or building blocks of protein. But thanks a lot. This has been been very interesting. Thank you.